Good morning. This is Frank Root from TLR's uh, Hidden uh, Garage area, uh, working through this uh, whole situation that we have. But uh, basically, we're here to do live build of the 22X4 series. We're going to continue going. We're going to do bags H and I, which is the entire rear suspension. Um, so far, we've only done one bag at a time, pretty much, but we're going to do two this time as bag H is the gearbox, which is very similar to the front. So we're going to go through that a little uh, quicker. And then bag I, which is basically the rear hub, uh, VHA rear hub assembly, drive shafts and such. So we'll go a little, little bit quicker because we're kind of, you know, redoing a, some of the build um, in terms of the gearbox and the center drive shaft, sway bar mounting, etc. cetera. Uh, so to keep in the tradition of what we were doing yesterday, uh, by having TLR team drivers on, I would like to welcome into the studio Zeke Bollinger. Zeke, how you hey, doing? Hey, everybody. I'm good. So Zeke is uh, one of our team drivers. He's uh, He's been a great addition to the team. He's one of my better friends. I do uh, talk to him quite a bit. And uh, Zeke, why don't you go ahead and kind of give everybody a rundown of uh, who you are, where you race, and your time with TLR and the 22X4. Um, so like you said, my name is Zeke Ballinger. Uh, a lot of guys call me Stubbs because of my arms. Um, I race in Colorado, and my home track is more RC up in Aurora, Colorado. Um, uh, we race uh, outside in the summertime on the uh, asphalt turf, and it's an indoor play track. Um, also, um, my, I guess my unofficial home, home track is LRC up in Longmont. That's where we race A-scale in the summer. Um, yeah, I've been racing for about six years. Um, as far as more competitively, I raced for like a year and a half and then took a couple of years off, but, um, really been kind of going at it, uh, pretty strong for about six years now. Um, this is the start of the third year with TLR. Um, although it doesn't feel like we've done a, a ton of racing, um, but we'll definitely be ready when it, when it's time to, to get back at it for sure. Um, I do have a, a little bit of time with the, the new four wheel and it's been, it's been pretty awesome so far. Awesome. So we got, uh, we got Zeke, we have bags, uh, H and I, we have the table cam. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of go through this build. I'm going to talk to you guys through the way that I build it. Um, we're going to hit up Zeke, see if he has any suggestions for the way he likes to build or tune. Um, and then, uh, we're going to answer some questions at the end. So, uh, let's get going with bag H. I'm going to set bag I off to the side here and go ahead and get this guy open. I have my, my tools and my manual and we have the four wheel as it's built so far. Uh, so we got the whole front end done and the chassis done. I'm going to go ahead and move that off to the side. So I have more room to work and I'm going to get a, uh, rag out here. I'm going to build on top of the rag. That way, none of the hardware parts, anything roll away. Uh, still relatively clean, uh, but we have been building the whole kit on it. So we have bags H1, H2, H3, and H4. And again, we're just going to build bag H1 right now. So we'll take two, three, and four. And I'm going to set them off to the side. I'm going to go ahead and open up bag H1, which is the rear gearbox assembly. Now, this is going to be really similar to the front gearbox assembly. Uh, the main difference um, is the gearbox itself is a little bit different, and then we're going to use a different length drive shaft. Uh, but other than that, like the assembly process is all the same. Uh, you have, you know, your rear gearbox. It doesn't have the mount here for that brace that runs from the steering post to the front end, if you choose to run that. Uh, and then the tower location is a little bit different in terms of laterally. And then we're going to use this, uh, the X93 uh, drive shaft in the rear, uh, 68 in the front. So, Zeke, you got your car, what, end of January? Uh, yeah, end of January, about a week before our big race here, Rumble in the Rockies. How did that go? Uh, it went pretty good. Um, I uh, qualified second and then I uh, finished second with that. Um, and, and also uh, got uh, a tie, tied for third in two-wheel drive with Tyler Witt, and he uh, he got me. So I finished fourth overall in in, uh, in uh, two-wheel drive. Okay. Um, got about three or four packs on it um, on the layout previous 
um, to the new layout for the Rumble. Uh, broke in some S3s with the car. Didn't mess with anything on the setup with the car. Just kind of wanted to drive it and just kind of get used to it and break some tires in. Um, I started with what you guys ran, uh, what you guys planned on running for the Reedy race. Um, figured that'd be a good start knowing the OCRC is a little bit lower grip. Um, and with the rumble starting on a green track, figured that'd be a good place to start. And, um, it definitely, definitely was, I was pretty surprised how good the car was on a really old abrasive track on S3s yeah. and then without changing anything. Um, going on a green track, you know, new layout, that type of thing. Oh, nice. So I can definitely, I'm, uh, I can definitely see why uh, Dakota didn't have to change a bunch of the worlds. Yeah. So I went ahead and built this assembly. Um, we have our rear gearbox here with the drive shaft. Um, I went ahead and did that. I didn't really walk you guys through it specifically because we already did this exact uh, assembly in um the front gear box it's pretty straightforward and uh being you saw it took what like a minute and a half to do it's pretty uh pretty easy but it's nice to have the nut that captures the pinion uh onto the axle there instead of having like a screw or something that can come loose um you know i definitely use some uh black grease in the cv joint there and uh got that all ready to go so now i'm gonna grab bag h2 and Crack that open. And this is going to be the uh, cover, hardware, the C, C block, C suspension block. And kind of going back uh, to what we talked about in the front. This is the rear cover. And you can see there's, there's no uh, dimple here for mounting the front uh, scoop or front wing, whichever you feel like calling it. So, um, that's what we have. And then we're going to grab our rear diff here. So kit uh, oil is uh, 5K, but I went ahead and built this one with four. This is the setup that we've been running lately, Dakota and myself. And uh, everything's feeling good. So we'll just drop the bearings on here. And drop it in the gearbox. And then add some black grease. I use quite a bit. We're going to modify it. You know, the extra is going to work its way out anyway. And then go ahead and put the cover on. And the cover, you don't want to, you can't really go in like this because it actually keys in this way. So you got to kind of go in straight from that direction. And then you have, so this time we have some 14 and some 16 millimeter screws in this bag. So you want to be sure that you use the 14s here to hold on the cover, the shorter of the two uh, longer button heads. And I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, 10 millimeter screws that go in the top here. And I'm going to start those first. So the nice thing is it is only four screws that hold the cover on. So you're able to get the diff out uh, really quickly. Were you, uh, were you surprised or happy or when you started working on the car, Zeke, and found out, you know, how easy it was to get the diffs in and out? Oh, yeah. I mean, even when I can do all the diffs and get them out in less than, you know, five minutes at, at the max, I mean, it, it really makes you want to even club race the car more often. You know, we don't do a whole lot of club racing as far as four-wheel drive here. Um, and I haven't ever really in the past because the cars have always been – a lot to keep up with um you know a lot of time to run a second class as far as keeping the car the way that i want it when i go to the track um but knowing that i can pull all the diffs out in no time um it really it makes you want to run the four-wheel drive stuff more so hopefully when we get back to race and hopefully there is more of a, a four-wheel drive class for club racing because definitely want to run this as much as possible yeah no i hear you for sure um, and one thing that we're going to do here is we have the, the ring gear on this side. So on the other side, I'm just going to kind of put that out drive against the table and tap it a few times. And uh, what that does is it just makes sure that this bearing on the ring side is all the way out and it loosens up that gear mesh as much as possible. And it just smooths out. Uh, it smooths it out. I mean, it's nice and free. There's a little bit of backlash. 
Uh, but yeah, that's what we, I do that just to make sure that the, this bearing is fully all the way out. Um, and you don't really need to go the other way. I mean, you can, if you want to, but, uh, this seems to work really well. Uh, so we have that and then we have our C, uh, block here, which is marked and black with the chamfers looking all hot. I know Zeke was a, a big proponent of the, uh, black parts um you know i at first i thought you were just talking about like a solid black part um and i think it kind of looks a little plain when everything is solid black but then when you added all the chamfered edges it it, it looks so sharp especially if you uh, run tie screws and that type of thing it just adds that nice little bling factor and really makes the cars look good so we have our gearbox here, we have our C pivot on, and now we're gonna install it to the chassis. So I'll bring the chassis back in the frame here. And I, uh, I go ahead and basically just line up the drive shaft and the out drives pretty straightforward. And then it just drops right in the chassis there. And here I tend to start, uh, these are 16 millimeter button heads. I tend to start these. Um, not get them tight, but just get them started so that basically it'll just hold the gearbox in place. The C pivot doesn't wrap around the chassis the way that the B1 does, so it won't really hold hold the car or hold the gearbox in place. I don't I don't think it was intentional, but that makes it super easy for me. What's what's that? The those two screws from the top on the chassis brace that holds the gearbox. When I, you know, when I'm when I'm building a wrench and when I got to put the gearbox back on the car, being able to kind of bolt it in from the top to where I can flip it over, um, and it all kind of holds it together, it makes it, it makes life so much easier for me. Okay, awesome. It, uh, I mean, that's one thing about this car that we we wanted to make it really um, easy to work on. I think that the layout of the car is very um, simple, not, not, not really complex or complicated. Uh, and that allows for, uh, you know, less fasteners, less things in the way of fasteners. And it just seems like the, uh, the whole thing just builds super smooth and easy. So now we have the, uh, the rear gearbox there on the chassis and we're gonna go on to bag H3. And this is the rear shock tower uh, wing mount body mount assembly so pretty straightforward here we have our four millimeter uh, carbon fiber tower chamfered on both both sides so this tower can go either way in the car uh, but you do have to pay attention because the ball studs and shock mounts have a certain orientation to them so I'm gonna go ahead and use hole number three on the rear tower here um, kit setup is for middle hole but we've been running the outside hole um, lately and i think it just gives the car a little bit more uh stability on power uh zeke what are you running there um i think i have the middle hole okay yeah no so, I'm, in, I'm in the middle hole still yeah so some something to try maybe next time you get to go to the track yeah for sure especially on slicks um the on, on power support i think it will definitely be um something that I would like to try because um, I did, we haven't got to it yet, but I did go to the, the number one hole on that, on the axle. And that kind of did the same thing for me. Okay. So that's kind of the change that I made to accomplish that, but it'd be nice to back to back it and see which one, you know, I was more comfortable with. Yeah. So we're, we're running uh, quite a few of us are running number three on the front tower as well. Gotcha. Yeah. I'm still two and two. Is the number three on both? Is that what Dakota ran at Desert Classic? Yes. Gotcha. All right. So we have our shock mounts there and the outside holes, and then we're going to install the ball studs. And these go in from the rear, and we're going to go in the top top hole, and I'll kind of hold it up so you can see. There's two sets of holes there, and we're going to go in the top hole, which is what we call hole number two. And I'll get both these started and then use the 
screwdriver to finish it off. So your home track, uh, what's your home track, Zeke? Uh, more RC. Okay, nice. And uh, they've been around. I want to say like thirty-four years or something crazy. So it, I think uh, they say that they're the the um, the oldest racetrack hobby shop in a continuous location. Yeah. Is the, uh, and they owned by the same family, so okay, you know, just did it forever. But Chad's been there since the beginning. Obviously, he was young, and he was just his dad opened it so he had a place to race years ago and so now um you know he runs it and and so yeah it's all it's all all in the family still oh nice all right so we have our tower with uh with ball studs and the mount there and i'm actually i go a little out of order here i go ahead and i'm gonna put the body mount in right now and it's off the car so like before we have two different rear body mounts one with the uh, body post that'll take a body clip and one without it's flat. I'm going to use the flat one. I use Velcro to mount my body. Um, and this is just something that, you know, instead of having <clears throat> one body post and for the guys that want to run Velcro, having to, uh, having to cut it off and sand it down and stuff, we just made a second one. And the fit of this guy is a little snug, but we did that on purpose so that, um, you know, it won't move around in there. And then you have your rear wing mount here. And I'm going to go ahead and use the middle hole on that with a 10 millimeter screw and basically get that screwed into the body post here. And that doesn't need to be crazy tight, but just nice and snug. And then, yep, just make sure it sits nice and level. And then that will all bolt onto the rear uh, shock tower here. And we're going to use the four screws. So there's two 14 millimeter screws and two 10 millimeter screws. The 14s go through the wing mount into that rear bulkhead. And the 10s just go straight through the tower into the bulkhead. These are pretty straightforward. One thing I'll mention is that the uh, the material of these gearboxes, bulkheads, are it's pretty stiff material, and it does help if you use some black grease in the holes, uh, especially if you're you know putting them in by hand. Um, so don't don't be afraid to put a little uh, a little bit of like a drop of black grease in there. It'll really smooth things out. Um, but using the power driver, I don't really need to. Uh, it seems to work pretty well. So. There you go, you got your rear tower and your rear wing mount all set up there. And we're gonna go ahead and move on to bag H4, which is the rear suspension arms. And the D plate. And we have some uh, arm spacing shims here. So we have some extra shims. And basically, the, there's a little bit of variance from arm to arm in terms of how uh, thick they are this way. So if you feel like you got a little bit too much of a gap in there, go ahead and add some of the arm spacers in. Uh, we had to leave the gap a little bit on the higher side because when you go to the stiff as all material, this gap, this length of this arm increases and the gap needs to be able to accommodate it. So first thing here, we're going to go uh, with the pill setup. We're running one up in the C block and middle, middle in the D block and that's kit setup and that's actually what we're running. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert those into the C block here, those one up inserts. That's so just one up, not one up and out or one up and over, just straight up one up. So middle, middle track width. And then I'm gonna install these hinge pins. And then I'm actually gonna set the car down for one second. And I'm going to do this first. I'm going to take the rear arm. So we have, this is the left arm. You can see that it's marked with an L right here. And then we have the right arm. 
but I'm going to take some lock grease and I'm going to put a little bit in the inner shock mounting hole on both. I'm going to grab my 1.5 and we're going to, we have these M3 by 20 uh, screws that go in the, they're set screws that go in these holes. And what we do is we put these in and then we secure the arm, uh, the shock to the arm by sliding over this post and then putting a nut on it. And it just makes it a lot easier to wrench on. And these need to be um, basically 10 millimeters out. Uh, so it's pretty much all the way in, uh, but I'm just going to measure it here real quick. So we're still at 12.5. So I got a little bit ways to go. And this is definitely something that's a lot easier to do before you install the arms on the car. So we're right at 10 there. So I'm just going to leave them. So yeah, definitely install these before you install the arms on the car. Zeke, are you running the uh, stiff as all arms or the standard arms? I'm running the, the standard arms still. Okay. Uh, have you tried the stiff as all arms or? Um, I have not yet. Okay. I think with my the one of the cars I got in January, if I remember correctly, I think all I got were regular arms. Okay. So. Yeah, I mean that's mostly what we've run on clay. Um, the stiff as all arms, they, they work well, uh, but they're a little heavier, and we do prefer the car to be light. So we've kind of stuck with that, um, probably is the biggest reason. Um, yeah, no, I, I can't believe how, how light the car is. I don't have as many, I don't have like the plastic internal diff gears like you do. Um, and I want to say I ran Rumble like 23 grams above minimum weight, something like that. Oh, nice. All right, so we got our um, set screws assembled in the arms here. So I'm just going to go ahead and slide the arms over the hinge pins. So we got nice free movement there. And then I'm going to see if it'll balance. No, nah, it's not going to balance. I'm going to go ahead and um, grab a couple of these arm spacers. I'm going to put one on each arm. I think that'll probably be a pretty good, uh, a pretty good fit. So I'm just going to do one on each arm. And these are molded shims, and they're a quarter mil thick. They're pretty thin. And then I'm going to go ahead and put these middle pills in the D-block with my other hand. And, again, these middle pills are – you can't really put them in wrong because they just – the hole is in the middle no matter which way you turn them. So line this up, push it on. Then we go ahead and take the screws – in the driver here and go ahead and install this block onto the back of the car all right so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to tighten these up by hand and then i'm going to do what i call tapping on the arm um, basically these, these pills are really, uh, a snug fit. Sometimes they don't get quite all the way in, but if you just give a little tap with the back of your wrench, like towards the inside of the arm, it'll fully seat the pills and you want to do it in both directions. So you're seating the, the C block and the, and the D block pills. Let's see, I think this one is... There we go. Now we're all the way. So now the pills are all the way seated, and you can see how the suspension movement is super free. We've got a good fit there with those quarter mil shims, so everything's good to go. And uh, if I add any shims uh, to the arms, I'm always going to add them behind the arm. Um, so there we, we, had a question from, we had a question from Brad. Um, do, do all the pills for carpet and turf setup come in the box? Yes, all the pills come in the box. Um, yeah, get, we, uh, go ahead. I would say, yeah, we always have a tuning parts bag that usually has all of the extra pills and everything that you may need to do all the settings for all of that type of deal. Yeah. So there's tuning parts one. It has all the extra pills in it. 
So we actually pulled some out when we were doing the front suspension to change the kit setup a little bit. Uh, but yeah, good, great question. All right, so we have bag I1, I2, I3, and I4. Um, here we're going to do I1, then 2, 3, 4. So I'm going to take 2, 3, and 4 and set them off to the side. I do see a comment here. Uh, so John Connolly says, these are great videos, Frank. You should add them to YouTube as well. Well, John, we're actually live on YouTube right now. And the videos, uh, all the videos that we did yesterday are still up on YouTube since we did them live on YouTube. So your wish is uh, our command there. We already got that handled. You can actually switch over to YouTube as well if you'd like. I know Zeke was saying that he liked that because he could watch the videos on his uh, on his TV. So here's the rear sway bar. And you can see it's marked with a 1.2. Uh, I mean, you can always measure them with calipers, but we do have the marking on there. And we're going to go ahead and install that. And this is very similar to, to what we did in uh, the front suspension. I put the bar on first, then the mount, and the two screws for the mount. Oh, sorry about that. And then what we want to do here is we're going to install the set screws, but we don't want to tighten them all the way down on the sway bar. So when you get that, uh, when you get that screw, and I think you bumped your camera a little bit. We're looking more at your laptop than I did bump it. I didn't know that it stayed though. So thanks for the heads up. Yep. Maybe a little, there we go. I think that's probably good. All right, so we're going to put these set screws in. And what we want to do is we want them to, um, I basically tighten them down until they, I know that they're touching the sway bar, and then I'm going to back them off until we're sure uh, that the sway bar is nice and smooth. And what you want is you need your sway bar to move freely. So you can see I'm going to tighten them down until we just touch and off the sway bar. And I'm kind of just using my thumb to kind of just bounce the sway bar around so that I know when it stops moving. So you can see now that the sway bar is not moving, right? It's it's kind of stuck there. And I'm going to just back back this off. See how it just all of a sudden it just dropped a little bit. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to kind of move it with my finger. There, see, stop moving. And then now we got free movement. So there's a little tight right there in the middle. So I'm just going to back, back each one off like a 16th of a turn. Because it's what we want is we want this super free movement out of the sway bar. We don't want it to get held up with the suspension at all. I'm going to grab my uh, needle nose pliers here. And you can see they have kind of teeth here. And then up top, they're smooth. And I'm going to use the smooth part and basically drop one of the uh, balls um in there oh, and then drop it as i switch hands so basically put the put that in there and then put the sway bar link over it and squeeze down on it and oh, of course i'm having a little trouble doing it on the video i'm not coming up clutch zeke you are not so what, what the, the key there is, if you use the part of the pliers without teeth, you're not going to leave any marks on um, the anodized part. I'm going to scratch the anodizing, and that's kind of the uh, the key there to doing that. So honestly, if you do it on the teeth, it's a lot easier, but then you can scratch your part. So there we go. Got both of them. And nice and free movement there. And then we're going to take these uh, sway bar set screws. Now, I haven't been Loctiting these. I, I haven't really had any issues with them coming loose. Um, but, you know, definitely feel free to use some Loctite if you'd feel a little bit more secure. So I'm going to put these in about halfway. Just kind of get them started. And then I'm going to go ahead and take them and snap them onto the suspension arm balls. Using the pliers here.
All right, so now once you have that all set up and you have your, your sway bar here, you wanna go ahead and uh, drop it in on both sides. And what I do is I, you want to set the sway bar so that it's flush with the end of the ball. Oh. So I'll kind of show you here on the camera. So I basically just slide the ball in and then I put my finger on the end and then I just slide it back till it basically sets against my finger and then uh, snug it down. And what I do is I generally, I try and hold uh, the ball itself so that when I'm tightening it down, I'm not bending or tweaking the bar. Uh, I'm just holding the, all the forces going through the ball that I'm holding with my hands. Our, uh, our sway bar setup is actually one of the things that, you know, I really like about our cars. You know, I've ran other cars in the past that haven't had that solid link before. Mm -hmm. um, and you've always had to measure like 1.1 millimeters of the sway bar hanging out the end. Um, since I've been on the team, we're pretty much always exactly flush and the links are already set a certain length. So you don't have to worry about the links being two different lengths or, or any of that thing and kind of creating a tweak in the, in the rear end. So um, it's those little things that make the build go easier and um, it's just a nice little touch. Yeah, and really, I mean, as long as the sway bars are bent flat, I mean, it's it's uh, it's fine to have them that way. So, I feel you. All right, so we got our rear hub assembly here. So these are the VHA hubs. They are uh, different for the four wheel drive. They're narrower, and you can see here there is a four marking right there on both hubs. That way, you know that they're for the four wheel and not for the two wheel. Uh, so you don't mix them up in inside your parts box. So we have our uh, ball studs, our inserts, and we're all just running the kit set up here. We're running the zero hole. So you have the zero and the four marking on here. And uh, there's a chart in the manual, but basically zero is uh, hinge pin up with this insert. So you just make sure you push it all the way in. Looks like so. Do that with both of them. And then we're going to put our ball stud and washer here together. So they're all ready to go. And then I'm going to install the uh, blocks here together. So we're not running any spacers. You can run spacers between the hub and this mount to kind of move it over and shorten your camera length a little bit and incrementally uh, in the incremental amounts. But we're actually running it flush for the kit setup. So I'm just going to push it all the way over. These screws I do use a little bit of thread lock on. Um, I just think that I've never had one come loose, but it doesn't hurt uh, to put a little bit of thread lock on there. So I'm just going to clean these with some brake clean. And I'm not going to go crazy on the Loctite on these because it really, it stays pretty good without it. So you don't need to have a whole bunch. Now, one thing you want to do is just make sure that when you do the left and the right, that you put the mount on uh, the opposite way. I mean, at this point, it doesn't really, um, you don't really have to say, oh, this is the left one and this is the right one, because that'll be determined when you put the ball stud, uh, install the ball studs. Uh, so there you go. There's one. And then here's the other. So we're going to go the opposite direction. And yeah, if you ever have to figure out like, oh, which way is which way, just hold the two parts next to each other and it becomes pretty clear. All right, so kit set up here. We're going to run the short link, and I, I'm going to check Dakota setup real quick because that's pretty much what I'm putting on the car. His car worked really good at hobby action, and I think that that's a great place to start, and I'm building this car to his setup. 
Let's see. And he was running. All right. So Camberlink, he was running two, which is the upper hole in the tower, and B on the hub, which is the middle hole. So we're going to go ahead and put this ball stud in. I do not recommend using thread lock on the ball stud uh, going into the aluminum block because if you, for some reason, break a ball stud, you're never going to get the rest of it out. Uh, as long as you tighten these down pretty well, they will not come loose. So I wouldn't worry about that. Uh, but yeah, I, that's one suggestion I have is I've, I've never put um, thread lock on ball studs uh, for ball studs that I want to be able to get out relatively easy anyway. So there's your two hubs. You have your ball studs uh, in the middle hole. And what we're going to do is this is the left and this is the right because we want our ball stud to be towards the back every time. So if we had put a ball stud in one of these other holes, then we would have flipped the hubs around and they'd be this way because we want the ball stud in the back. But this is the left and this is the right. I'm just going to lay them down like that. And we'll go to the next bag, I3. And here's our rear CV assembly. Bearings, hexes. And axles. So we have our our axle here that has multiple locations in it across the axle for the CV pin. Uh, we have actually four locations: one, two, three, and four. And we count up as we go out this way towards the outside of the car. Uh, so kit setting on this is going to be number two. And that's what we've been running also uh, as a team. And we're going to go ahead and put some black grease again in our drive shafts here. So these are the X, uh, X67 bones. And Zeke, have you been running these bones on your two wheel also? Yes, I have. So that we, yeah. uh, we machine these bones a little bit differently and they have less uh, on power like lock up bind in the drive shaft itself and it seems to have improved the way the car drives maybe zeke can kind of explain that to you while i assemble yeah, this for for me um it allows you to to get on the gas a little bit sooner coming out of the corner and it doesn't it doesn't want to necessarily go perfectly straight it's not loose and you don't get wheel spin or anything like that but for me um, it allows you to keep steering and pick up the gas a little bit sooner and help you get a little bit more corner speed. Okay. So we do have four pins in this bag, and there there are two different lengths. They're pretty close, but they are different lengths. And what you want to do is you want to use the two short pins to build your CV joint. Your CV joint. So I'm going to grab the two short ones there. And I'll keep the long ones over here, and I'll actually just put them next to the hexes because that's what they're for. So put some, I put some grease inside the drive shaft there and then put the barrel in and take the extra grease and kind of wipe it around. And then we're going to go in hole number two. So, again, we're counting one towards this end, two, three, four as we go out. And so we're going to go to the second hole here, which is number two, and go ahead and slide it through. And one more note, we did... This is a different axle because the offset's uh, narrower in the rear end. So there is a number four right here marked on the axle so that you can make sure that you don't mess mix it up with the two-wheel drive cars. And then here we don't have a sleeve. It's actually the bearing acts as the sleeve. So I'm going to build the CV, and I'm just going to slide the bearing over it real quick. And then I'm going to build another one here. So what kind of uh, lube or grease do you use on your CV joints, Zeke? Um, I had used grease for quite a while, um, and probably about six months ago, I started using the, the one-up uh, red CV uh, joint stuff. Um, okay. I do I do think it makes suspension a little bit smoother. Um, I also like um, the ease of being able to kind of maintenance it from outside the car without necessarily taking it apart every time. You know, you can okay. kind of tip the car and put a couple drops in it, and then it'll kind of soak in, and it's good for... A couple of couple of club races and that kind of stuff. Um, it's nice as far as the convenience instead of having to pull it apart. Not that it's hard, but um, anything that 
kind of helps me out and saves time is, is a win in my book. Yeah, awesome. So we have uh, so I have the other drive shaft assembled here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these uh, smaller bearings. I mean, they're still a uh, large a large size bearing, but it's a uh, five by thirteen by four. I'm going to go ahead and install those in the outside of the hubs, and then I'm just going to take this whole drive shaft assembly with the bearing on it and kind of install it and push that bearing in to the hub. And same with the other. And then we're going to go ahead and put these pins in the axle. What I do is I just hold this vertically so that the pin doesn't fall out. I mean, if you go this way, then the pin just falls out. So just hold it vertically and it'll kind of keep it self-centered. Slide the hex over it. And then you can grab your 1.5 and the little set screw. The little, it's not a set screw, but the little screw here and just thread it in. And these screws don't need to be mega tight. I mean, you're not cranking them down all the way. You just want to compress the hex enough that it doesn't slide on the axle. Um, like so. So we have. Uh, and Matt has a question on, on what you use when you uh, clean out your bearings, when you screw out your bearings. Uh, so if you're using uh, kit bearings, I mean, you can use motor spray or brake clean. Um, I have brake clean. I keep brake clean on my table in the garage, but I don't take it to the track with me, mostly because it just has a real strong smell. And I. I don't really enjoy it when other people use it around me. So I try not to use it around other people. Uh, but motor spray works really well also. Uh, but make sure that if you're going to spray the grease out that you re-oil the bearings. So here we have our uh, two different hub assemblies with drive shafts. Remember ball studs to the back. So this is left and this is right. And then we're going to go to bag I-4. And this is basically completes the rear suspension assembly with bag I-4. So we have our hinge pins, we have some shock bushings and nuts and some aluminum washers. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and grab our chassis again and we're gonna install the hub into the rear arm here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the out drive, uh, the drive shaft into the out drive and I'm gonna grab the pin and you can see the pin doesn't have a notch on it the front one has a notch on it. So that's how you tell the front from the rear because they're slightly different lengths. So basically we're gonna run a one mil spacer in the back and a two mil in the front. So what I'll do is I'll put the pin in and then I'll put the one mil spacer on, it's pretty easy. Then I'll put the hub on and I'll start sliding it through and I'll get about halfway. And then what I do is I'll put the other spacer in and then I'll actually like push the hub forward so that it holds the spacer in place and then slide the pin in. <laughs> And that way, the, you're not kind of dropping that spacer in and out and having any issues with that. And then once you have the pin in place, use a 1.5 and this little uh, button head screw. It screws into the arm and holds the back of the pin. And this is the same size screw that we use for the um, bleeder on the shock caps. So got one side done. Move over and do the other side real quick. And do the same kind of process. Uh, order of steps. Uh, William, no, the, the hubs on the four wheel drive and the ones on the 5.0 Elite are different. We do have aluminum hubs for both cars, but they are a little bit different geometry wise. So you want to make sure that you have the, the correct hub for the two wheel and the correct hub for the four wheel if you uh, want to run the aluminum one. Yeah, correct. The, the offset is different. All right, and then you have here, you have your, uh, basically now we have those hubs assembled and on the car, we're gonna grab our rear camber links that we assembled uh, previously, way back in bag uh, B, I think. So we're gonna go ahead and get these popped on the car. And they've been sitting overnight, so they're a little stiff. Let's see here. So 
So I try to pop these on with my hands. If I feel up to it, that way you're not getting any marks on them from, uh, from the pliers. All right, so we got the turnbuckles on now. Now we're going to take the rear shocks that we've already assembled. And again, the bleeder screw here on the top will go towards the inside. So go ahead and put a shock bushing on, put that on, and then line it up also to go over the set screw in the arm. And then a nut on the top and a nut on the arm, and we're going to be all set. Grab my 5.5 here. And again, when we tighten these down, you don't just crank down the top. You need to make sure that the shock has free movement. So I always kind of wiggle it back and forth and make sure that it still moves nice and free. If you tighten it down to the point that it, uh, you know, it gets bound up, then your suspension is not going to return uh, and work freely. And then we put the other ones here on those set screws on the chassis. All right, so, woo, and I keep butterfingers today. No so there we go. We got our front suspension on we got our rear suspension on and i'm doing i call it tool roundup but i basically just put all my tools away and clean my work area so there's our 22 x4 front suspension rear suspension on the car um, i got two more videos coming your way so the net on the next video we're going to do uh bag j which is the rest of the assembly including electronics and then we're going to do another setup, which I, I'm calling a final setup. So it's once your electronics are in your car, um, all of the things that you do to get onto the racetrack, your ride height, your camber, your tow, your radio settings, uh, and all of those. Um, so let's go ahead and open it up for some questions. You got myself, you got Zeke here. Uh, so go ahead and ask away and we'll start going through the questions here in just one second. All right. So you got me loud and clear, Zeke? Yep. Yep. All right. We got the table cam off. That way you can just see Zeke and I. All right. Let's see what questions we have. Rob Sturkill says, good morning. Hey, Rob, how you doing? And we also got a uh, good morning. What up from Hunter King? I know he watched all the videos yesterday. So Hunter's going to know how to build his car when it, when it gets there. Uh, Corey Richardson says, good morning. Good morning, Corey. We really uh, miss, miss you, man. I haven't seen you at a race in a while. So it's kind of a bummer, but I'm sure we'll see each other soon. Uh, Justin Salerno says, hey, Zeke. Barry Baker says, whoa, let's give this guy a hand. Love you, bud. So Barry, always the joker. Uh, Ryan Doreen says, hello. Let's see. All right. RC Player says, nice. I picked up a discontinued Losi 4.08 and 8T. I wanted to order shims before starting. Awesome. That should be fun. Really fun build for you. And TLR shocks too. Uh, so he says that it's a bummer. He has nowhere to race, but the indoor carpet track, I don't know. Uh, but I like to race. I mean, uh, how much can you bash by yourself? Yeah. I mean, after a while of bashing, you, you want to get out and race people. It's definitely, uh, definitely fun to race. Uh, talking about says this is sick. I have an 8xe and just got my 8x elite. Can't wait for this to go. Uh, can't wait for these down the road. So yeah, hopefully Dunford can do something similar so that the eight guys have something to reference when they're building their kits. I just finished mine yesterday. Oh, what'd you build? 
uh, I just converted my regular 8X into the Elite and then rebuilt my uh, 8XE and got it all ready for whenever we can go out. So. Awesome. Let's see, uh, Brad Maynard says, do pills for carpet and turf set up in the box or have you changed them much? Yes, uh, all the pills are included in the box. Let's see, John, yep, we covered that. They're on YouTube already. Uh, and he wanted to know because, yep, he's watching on the TV now and he likes that better. All right, let's see what else we got. Jacob Leader says, Zeke, hanging out. All right, here's one that we got. All right, Gregory Schaefer, what country is this kit made in? Zeke, do you know? Uh, Taiwan. Correct. Yep. They are not made in China. They are made in Taiwan. And I know that most people in the U.S. <laughs> might not understand the difference, but if anybody has worked in manufacturing, there's actually a pretty big difference between something made in Asia or in China and something made in Taiwan, uh, from my experience. And it's kind of like saying that something made in Mexico and the U S would be the same because they're both in North America. So, uh, that would be a pretty big thing there. All right. Here's a question. All right. William Hobbs asks, are the shocks the same setup like the 5.0 or are they different? So I'll let you take that one, Zeke. Um, they are more similar to the 5.0 shocks that came on the DC and the AC and the SR. So they're the three mil shock shaft, um, but the um, the O-rings and the bushings um, are all new. So the shocks are much smoother, um, they leak less, they seal better, um, and they're less sticky. So um, all around, they're a huge improvement. Um, I'm a big fan of the 3.0 shafts on two wheel, and um, I haven't tried the five three five shaft shafts on four wheel i don't really intend to the car is so good right out of the box that um the smaller shock shaft in my opinion just gets around the track faster um and um we don't have to drive crazy hard and the lap times just kind of reward you for running the, the smaller shock shaft yeah and one other note on the uh 22 x4 the shock shafts do come with the tie carbon i tried you don't get the uncoated shafts so little upgrade there too. And uh, thin pistons. Gotcha. Oh yeah, the thin pistons, yeah. Let's see. All right, Eric Lawson, do you run front LCD drive shafts on dirt and why no ball stud and why ball stud to the back on the rear hub performance difference? Uh, so we tried the LCDs on dirt and we just didn't really care for them. Um, so we run the, the CVDs, uh, CVD style X74 drive shafts in the front. Uh, we do run the LCDs on carpet, though. And then for the ball stud on the hub, you basically, when you run it in the rear, it's just in line with the ball stud on the rear tower. When you run it to the front, you put a lot of uh, put a lot of angle in it, and it just kind of is unnecessary performance-wise. Probably not, but um, definitely for me, it, it just looks correct. And, uh, it, I mean, it, technically it's going to be a little bit different, but it's just the right way to do right way to go all right luke yuna says what up boys what's up buddy let's see what else we got <clears throat> all right, looks like that's all the questions we got so i just want to thank zeke for coming on today i really appreciate it um no, thanks for having zeke, me, dude. zeke is uh getting faster and faster and like i say he's one of my better friends for racing so uh, I really enjoy uh, getting getting to the track with him and Travis and uh, the Colorado boys. So uh, if you have any questions for myself or Zeke, feel free to post them. We'll try and get to them later. Uh, it looks like we did have another question show up. So uh, should I get the 22 X4 for a backyard track that I run with my kids or get a couple more tool drive kits? Um, I mean, it just depends on you know, what you prefer to drive. I mean, I think four-wheel drive is probably more fun to drive, especially if the grip's lower. What do you think, Zeke? Oh, without a doubt. I think, if, especially on a backyard track, I think a four-wheel drive would be the way to go. Cool. And then can the 3.0 shocks be bought as a kit or do you have to piece them together? Um, you can buy them as a kit. We have complete kits of the 22 shocks, um, the 3.0 shafts on the G3s. 
but we do run the carbon nitride shock shafts usually, and those uh, are not included in the shock kit. So it kind of depends on what you're doing, whether you want to buy those kits or piece them together. And then Philippe Bonnet asked, can we run the shock in the back of the arm? And on the four wheel drive, you cannot, there's not a setup for that. So, all right. Well, thanks Zeke. I really appreciate it, man. Thanks for coming Thank on or hanging out. So I'm not just gibbering, jabbering to myself and uh, yeah, it was fun. keep it rolling. So, all right. Thanks for coming on everybody. Take care. I'll be back in like 15 or 20 minutes and we'll roll on to the next set of bags.